actually start to your audience. I saw it on Facebook. Good evening. Before we do anything, I, I want to uh, um, thank the Citizens Academy for turning out and observing our meeting tonight. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you uh, to the other people in the overflow room that are understanding of us having the Citizens Academy here tonight to observe what we do. So this would be an excellent um, time for everyone to silence all electronic devices. The agenda for the school board meeting is published and available at least one week prior to the school board meeting. Also, one week prior to the meeting, members of the public have the opportunity to correspond with board members with those communications becoming part of the official record. Any member of the public who wishes to speak on an agenda item will have an opportunity to do so prior to final action being taken. Please fill out a speaker request card available in the lobby. During the public comment portion of the meeting, names to be called as they are received. Any member of the public wishing to speak to, on a non-agenda item on matters relevant to the school district will have an opportunity to speak at the end of the meeting. Please fill out a speaker request card available in the lobby and names will be called as they are received. We welcome members of the public to attend our meetings and we respect the public's right to speak to the board. We will not tolerate behavior that disrupts the orderly conduct of this meeting including yelling or speaking over others. Our civility policy is in effect. Our vision statement, all our students achieve success in college, career, and life. The thought of the day is by Megan Harding. I talk a lot about kindness, and being kind seems to be something we're losing nowadays. It isn't always easy to do, but it is always the right thing to do. Remember that one kind word can change someone's entire day. <coughs> All right, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'd like to announce that all school board members are here. And I'd also like to ask for a moment of silence for personal reflection. Thank you. I, I entertain a motion for the minutes of the regular meeting of August 30th. Move to approve. Second. First Crumley, second Harding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Special presentation. I'd like to invite Courtney Gant, or do you want to introduce who's coming up? Yes, I would like to introduce Mrs. Franz, the, uh, the principal at Starkey Ranch K-8. And she'll be sharing with us tonight a special teacher. Hey, everyone. Hi, I'm Jennifer Franz. I am the principal of Starkey Ranch K, and I was given the honor of selecting an inspiring educator from my school to highlight for their wonderful accomplishments so far. As you know, Starkey Ranch K is still a relatively new school. Um, I have a wonderful staff, but one staff member came to mind for all that she's already done so far. I would like to recognize one that I have here with me tonight. This is Miss Anna Shea. Stand up. She She's joined here tonight by her husband and her parents. So welcome to all of them. <laughs> Ms. Shea is our dance and theater teacher here in our Academy of the Arts magnet program at our school. When hiring for our brand new school last year, I was looking for a passionate educator that could inspire students and bring out the very best in them. Ms. Shea was one of the first people who came to mind for me. She already served as a youth theater director in our community but had dreams of becoming a public school teacher. She shared with me how theater had changed her life in school and gave her her home away from home. She had a desire to create a place where students could be creative, find confidence, and their passion, right here in public schools. She had the drive to do whatever it took to make it happen. 
We kept the bar pretty low for our first year. Our expectations weren't very high. We just wanted kids to feel engaged and supported. And every time I had an idea, she asked me, could she do something else? And of course, I gave her the reins to do whatever she liked. Um, and I have, I'm happy to say that she has created a thriving theater program in our school. She is the only teacher in our entire building who teaches students from kindergarten all the way to eighth grade. She truly sees them all. When you have a school of almost 2,000 students, she gets to impact many, many lives daily. Her program that she has built has become our most requested program in our entire building. Each day she inspires confidence and helps our students find their voice. We are lucky to have her here at Starkey Ranch K-8 and Pasco County Schools is lucky to have her serving the students of our county. Congratulations, Ms. Shea, on all of your accomplishments so far. We can't wait to watch you continue to grow in your programs here at Starkey. Thank you. And if, if you would uh, introduce anybody that's with her tonight, or I think you might have already. Yeah, so. this is Ms. Peter Shea, obviously. This is her husband, Dan. Brandon. Brandon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh,
of $57.2 million in state funding to accommodate our projected growth of 3,588 students and to pay for recurring expenses. Out of the $57.2 million, $12 million is set aside for school choice. That's our charter schools and our scholarships. $4.5 million for retirement increases, $3 million for health insurance increases, approximately $2 million for software licenses, <coughs> utilities, and the SRO contract increases. The negotiated salary increases are also included in this total. The budget includes a reduction of, uh, of 115.4 school, excuse me, an increase of 115.4 school allocations for an increase of $7.7 .7 million. The budget includes an increase of $1.4 million for allocations and operating costs for the opening of Kirkland Ranch Academy Innovation and Triple L or Angeline 612. The capital budget is $534.6 million, an increase of $195.4 million over last year. Major capital projects are for the, coming continue, uh, the continuing renovations of Hudson High School, the construction of the new Gulf High School, and the construction of the Kirkland Ranch K-8. Additionally, projects include a classroom wing at Starkey Ranch K-8 and the construction of Triple L or Angeline 612. Other projects include cafeteria renovations, replacement of HVAC systems, and infrastructure upgrades at various schools. The 22-23 budget also reflects fiscal priorities which prioritize and support student achievement. Additionally, it is designed to ensure the smooth delivery of effective uh, school operations while prioritizing the needs of our students and our community. As you are well aware, the budget is a living document and continuously changes as the year progresses. Budget amendments will be submitted to the board to reflect any changes to this budget once adopted by the board. Let me take just a quick moment before I conclude my remarks and uh, thanking Tammy Taylor, our CFO, and Michelle Williams, uh, our Director of Finance, uh, and their teams, their entire teams, uh, for everything that they've done this year uh, to compile not only uh, our budget, but also the annual financial report that's also on the consent agenda uh, for this meeting. So thank you and please convey to your teams my thanks and the board's thanks. With that being said, uh, Madam Chairman and members, I respectfully request your approval of the 2022-23 fiscal year final budget as presented. Move to approve. Second. What, what we need to have the public hearing first. So I was just, Nancy, real quick, I do not see any cards on the public hearing? So when you read the public I think there was there was one. There, there, there's one. Four point one. If you see it. All right. Uh, while he's four point one. Okay. While he's looking at that, I'll read the attorney script. Uh, this is to announce the public comment portion of the second of two public hearings on Pasco County School Board tentative millage rates and budgets for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. The first hearing was held on July 26, 2022, and this is the second and final public hearing. Notice of this hearing has been posted on the district website in, publica in publication in compliance with Florida Statute 10111.03. Any members of the public who wishes to be heard on the budget are asked to complete a green a uh, speaking request card that you can obtain from the board secretary or the entrance of the boardroom. When called, please approach the podium and state your name and address for the record. Each speaker will have three minutes to speak unless the extension is granted by the board chair. All right, so we have two, two identified okay. uh, speakers. Yes. All right, uh, the first, uh, Fei Fei Ho, and he might... Okay, good. You are here. So some of the, some speakers may be in the overflow room, so please have patience with us. Uh, after uh, Fofo Ho is James Washington. Go ahead. Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, definitely, I want to speak about uh, 4.1, which is the budget, and also ties into 11.4, which is about uh, raising our teacher salary. Uh, Mrs. Harding, I want to say thank you for bringing up concerns about our school bus uh, uh, you know, situations about uh, a couple weeks back. And Superintendent, I just want to personally thank you for bringing up your concerns about student behaviors. I really hope that my students and my schools use about two to three per class. 
uh, hope that they get to you know understand concerns that we are trying to get the best that, and do the best we can for our students. And I really wish that our my colleagues, the parents, and even all the people who work with my school got to hear concerns through attendance. So, Dr. Thank you because it seems like you know even today my special ed teachers feel like that their concerns were not being met. Um, definitely with, with our budget going through, thank you for being very very transparent. Um, it's unfortunate that you guys always get blasted on you know things that are kind of out of your hands. Um, I'm one of the few people at my school that gets to understand. I always uh, kind of like the rhyme or reason tell my colleagues and even the people in the community that we kind of don't have control of how we spend our money. Unfortunately, hopefully that we get to explain it to Tallahassee that hopefully we get a way to you know budget the money wisely so we can spend it correctly instead of having all the uh, extra categoricals. Just like I look at the two of the schools I'm at. Uh, Chaska Elementary, Rich Elementary, we're some of the lowest in the state. How did I get there? We're totally un underfunded. For us to get to where we needed to, we kind of had to have to struggle to fail in order to get the money and the supports we need. And we were just talking about that even today in our PLCs. Why do we have to fail to actually get the money coming into our schools? It's great that we're finally getting the people to support what we need to support. 11.4, uh, which is about teacher salary you know, increases. Thank you for doing that for us. And as I explained to our folks at the legislature, kind of have a tough time believing that the governor's promise of 47.5 is super, super easy. I was talking to Senator Stargell. She was actually the head of appropriations. She had a tough time believing that our uh, required local efforts actually get gained by gaining more people. Actually does not. So I'm, I'm very glad, Superintendent, you made it very, very transparent that when more people move in, we actually lose more money. I hope that we get to send that message up to Tallahassee that the more people move in, we should be able to have as much money to help our school systems out. But by getting done, uh, salaries up, it's great that we're getting people to stay in, in our district. I had a personal friend after two years in Hillsborough County. This is how well we did two years in Hillsborough County, uh, Blake School of the Arts. She's now teaching in Pasco County. So hopefully we can move in a positive direction. And I always tell people, you know, I'm all about my hats. I don't wear logos just because it's something I kind of care for. So I always uh, make sure I'm proud to represent our district, proud to represent the people, and proud of my students that we get to serve every day. Students are successes mm -hmm. every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. James Washington. Good evening, James Washington, 38737 Fifth Avenue, Zephyr Hills. Madam Chair, Superintendent Browning, board members, Attorney Alfonso, district employees, and guests in both rooms. Webster's Dictionary, a book that I don't think has been banned from our libraries yet, defines courage as mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. As you prepare to vote on the final budget, item 4.1 and 1211, I stand before you for clarify, clarify, fair, clarification on a few items. On page 15 of your, you identify over $5.5 million for buses and motor vehicles. Will these buses be class A, class C, class D, as outlined in the Florida School Bus Specifications Guide? As you are aware, parents are still waiting for the results of ridership data from transportation and leasing of larger capacity D-style buses would solve some of these problems that caused transportation cuts earlier this year. On page six of your budget, you include the following. Even with limited resources, district will continue to meet these obligations while pri prioritizing the needs of students. So I ask each of you, do we truly prioritize our needs of our students and staff who are seated in these rooms tonight? How is it prioritizing the needs when we remove safe space stickers from classrooms and withhold clubs? How is it prioritizing the needs when we allow the so-called educational governor to use our school as a backdrop to sign bills that take away rights from our students and our families? How is it prioritizing our students when we stand with that same governor who espouses how he is great for education when we rank 41st with per pupil spending and 49th in SAT scores? Later, you will be discussing item 1211, which budgets nearly $2.7 million to Pasco County Sheriffs. Among other things outlined in this proposal, the sheriff will provide 100% of the costs for crossing guards. Will students trying to cross dangerous intersections like Collier Parkway, St. Joe's Road, 301, 54, 52, etc., get finally get the crossing guards that they need to stay safe? I started my comments with the definition, and let me return to it for quickly. It takes courage to use your platform to call out these failures, not just as reactionary comments in this forum, but publicly. Last month, the board commented on how transportation allocations are not financed properly from the state, 
it would have been courageous to stand at the same podium as that governor and that commissioner of education and tell them that the lowest quartile and ranking is not good enough and that funding is not good enough. It is shameful that some of you running for re-election would state, I stand with the governor who has continued to underfund education and ridicule and disrespect your staff and your students. Now is not the time to capitulate. I stand to defend our students, our staff for whom you serve and take the courage to be their true selves. Thank you. All right, that is, the, that is the end of public comment on the budget. So now I'll be reading. This is a public announcement of the statements per section 200.65, paragraph um, parentheses 2, parentheses D, Florida statutes prior to millage levy resolution. The taxing authority is the district school board of Pasco County. The rollback rate is 5.1058 mills. The percentage increase is 8.03%. The millage rate is to be levied for the 2022-2023 is 5.5160 mills. I need a motion to adopt the resolution determining revenues and millage levied. Move to approve. Second. All right, first Crumley, second. Bodwin, any discussion or comments? I had a bunch of comments, but I think the superintendent mm -hmm. said all the data I had written down. So I... Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The final budget is one billion. Now this is varying slightly from what you said, uh, Superintendent Browning. Um, Superintendent Browning. Go, go with what you have. Okay. All right. The final budget is one billion seven hundred twenty-two million seven hundred forty-two thousand one hundred and forty-eight for the fiscal year 2022-2023. I'll ask for a motion to adopt the final budget resolution. Madam Chairman, if yes. I may, uh, my number is correct. Uh, right. So if you can, that is the number that we need to have in the record. Okay. Is that correct, Mrs. Taylor? All right, so let me reread this then. Okay. The final budget is $1,806,000,000. Six hundred and twelve thousand two hundred and thirty, okay, an increase. Like that, it? Okay, I don't need to read about the increase for the fiscal year 2022-2023. I'll need need a new motion uh, approval. Move to approve. Second. All right. First Crumley. Second Harding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. That closes the final hearing on the proposed annual budget for 2022-23. Right. Are there any off-agenda items tonight, Superintendent? Yes, ma'am, there are. Yeah. You have on your desk, um, I'm requesting approval of hours for extended school day programs. That would be item 16.12. Uh, and then the other item is the approval of a contract with the Red Apple School, and that would become item 16.13. Now we come to the portion we of, to, oh, to, well, I'm I sorry. I'd like to approve the take. Second. Yes. Okay, we've got a, a motion to approve to take off agenda items. items. Uh, we need Second. To individual one. Okay. So 16.12 and 16.13. Okay, we've got a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. That brings us to the public comment portion for agenda items only. This is an opportunity for the public to be heard on items appearing for action on the meeting agenda. Copies of the agenda are available at the entrance to the boardroom. 
To speak at this time, you must have submitted a green speaking request card located on the tables at the entrance to the boardroom. The green, the form will must indicate the specific item or items you wish to address. Speakers wishing to address general matters or not on the agenda should complete the pink speaking request card and will have an opportunity to speak later in the evening. Speakers who wish to speak on both types of topics will have available time allocated between among the topics and will have to save non-agenda comments for the appropriate segment of the agenda. If you have any materials you wish to share with the board, please provide them to the board secretary prior to speaking. Each speaker has up to a total of three minutes to address the board. If you see the yellow light on the podium, please wrap up your comments uh, to leave time for other speakers. Uh, speakers will be called to come forward by the chairman. Prior to making your remarks, please state your name and address for the record. All speakers and comments are subject to the applicable school board bylaws and policies, including those requiring appropriate decorum and civility. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No person may address or question board members individually. Staff members shall not be expected to answer questions from the audience unless called upon by the school, by the board chairman or superintendent. And I just saved you a bunch of talking. Thank you very much, Madam <laughs> Chair. I appreciate it. All right. Normally, uh, the attorney would be saying that. Mm -hmm. Madam uh, Chair, if I can, just for the record, because i got to yeah. say something. Oh, yes, sir. I did want to mention that we did receive let's talk comments, yeah. but there were none that were received on agenda topics. So at this point, the record should reflect no, uh, none of those will be included. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I'll read the first name and then the person that would be uh, on board. Nessica Jacuso Wright. And then after that would be Heather Adams. Good evening. My name is Jessica Jacusco Wright, and I live at 3535 Tour Trace, uh, Lando Lakes, Florida. And I wanted to come and talk with you guys today on the agenda item 16.7 regarding bullying and suicide prevention for 16.10. 26% of our student body identifies as LGBTQ. I am also identify as LGBTQ. And I can tell you that as a student of Pasco County, as an educator of Pasco County, previous educator, that we need safe spaces for our kids because we don't have them. And much of this conversation began in 2018 when middle school coach, Coach Opa Tassano, decided to not provide reasonable accommodations to a trans student in the locker room. I can tell you as a student that was previously harassed and bullied by Coach Opa Tassano that we need a better process, that we need to have systems in place that protect our kids that they know that there are adults that they can go to, that they can report to, and that those reports will be heard, that they will not be mocked, that they will not be lost, and that action will actually be taken. It does not matter how our staff may identify from a religious standpoint. We serve the public and we serve all of the public, regardless of how we may feel behind closed doors. It does not matter. Students that identify as LGBTQ are 8 to 10% more likely to not attend school because they feel unsafe. 20% are more likely to be harassed by their peers. 40%, actually 40 to 45% are more likely to contemplate suicide. 20% are more likely to actually attempt suicide, more so than their peers. This is from data that you collected in 2021 with the student survey. This is your own data. I'd like to take a moment to read something that Mr. Browning issued to a parent that continued to bully and harass our teachers regarding safe spaces. Please be advised that the district will not be doing away with safe spaces for students, nor will it be taking any action against district staff who lawfully make spaces available for students. The spaces are there for health, safety, and welfare of the students and will not be eliminated because of any unlawful or outrageous conduct you personally attribute with them because of research you performed on Wikipedia or social media. Mr. Browning, I have always respected you and I genuinely hope that over the next two years that we make decisions based off leadership and the best interest of our staff and our students and not out of fear of litigation. 
Thank you. All right, Heather Adams also speaking on 16.7 and 16.10, and then uh, Marty Washington. Hello, thank you uh, for hearing me out today. I rise today in support of the Safe Space stickers. As an educator for 13 years, I believe that our schools should foster diversity, inclusion, and acceptance. Safe space stickers are an infinitesimally small measure that let all of our children know that they are welcome in our classrooms. They are not symbols designed to disenfranchise any part of a group of students who may dislike what the rainbow symbol stands for. Those stickers are a symbol that people who are different, who don't think, dress, act, or love like the majority of other students are just as welcome in our schools. A sticker is a small thing, but it is a symbol that we as educators will treasure and accept all of our students, regardless of their beliefs. What is not a small thing is the 45% of LGBTQ students almost one in two, who will seriously consider suicide this year. This Suicide Prevention Month, I implore you to consider what message the removal of these stickers sends to the at-risk youth who view them as a reminder that they are valued in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Washington, on 16.7, and then Jeremy Blythe. Good evening, Superintendent Browning, Chair Armstrong, Vice Chair Harding, school board members, district staff, and guests. My name is Mindy Washington, and I live at 38737 Fifth Avenue, Zephyr Hills. I am pleased that you will be declaring October Bullying Prevention Month. As a teacher and a parent, bullying prevention is an incredibly important subject to me. Our job as educators is to create a safe environment or space, if you will, in which our students learn. But I am a little confused tonight because your proclamation seems to contradict your removal of safe space stickers in district classrooms, not yet. <laughs> I have brought some visual aids to help to illustrate my extreme confusion. You see, these are screenshots from your anti-bullying training that you require every staff member to complete. Number one. Pasco County will not tolerate unlawful bullying and harassment, including sex-based harassment. It seems that since we are no longer providing safe spaces, that this is no longer valid. You should probably remove that from the training. Number two, when bullying behavior is based on a protected class, that behavior is defined as harassment. Protected classes include race, color, religion, sex, age, disability, and national identity. So now, We've risen to harassment. Number three, by your own admission from your studies, there is a 40.1% increase in LGBTQ students that feel hopeless and sad over their heterosexual counterparts. 34.9% increase in those that have considered suicide. 18.9% increase in students that have attempted suicide. And 6.4% increase in LGBT students that have required medical attention. From your own training, we must do better for our LGBTQ students. This is not a question of wanting special treatment for a small group of students. This is about keeping our students alive. Number four, 18.2% more LGBTQ students report being bullied. 16.3% more LGBTQ students report being bullied online. And 40.1% 40 feel sad or hopeless. Imagine what these numbers will be when LGBTQ students no longer have an adult that they can turn to. Are you okay with this? Your number five, your definition of bullying is an imbalance of power motivated by race, sexual orientation, religion, or disability. You have exerted your power over teachers and staff. You have used your power to silence allies. You will use your power to proclaim October Bullying Prevention Month, but we know that these are just hollow words from weak people. All right, Jeremy Bly on 16.7 and 16.10, and then uh, Beverly Ledbetter.
Good evening, Superintendent, Madam Chair, and school board members. Students come to us as teachers for support. Students should have a safe place to turn no matter what the world is throwing at them. For decades upon decades, schools have been a safe haven for kids to return, to turn to when they may not have a better place to go. They should be able to turn to their parents, no questions asked. But the sad reality is that a lot of kids in society today are afraid to be the best version of themselves with their parents for fear of rejection or even worse, being abused physically or mentally. Think back to a time when you were in school. Did you have a favorite teacher? What was your favorite thing about them? They were probably kind to you, cared about you, and were there to support you, possibly through some of the most traumatic events of your entire life. We as teachers wear many different hats, and that is no secret. But we have an opposing force telling us that we can't provide the sometimes life-saving support for our students that they so desperately need because we are indoctrinating kids and are teaching them to be gay, racist, or transgender. If you are even remotely grounded in reality, you know that this is simply not how it works. The simple fact is that LGBTQ youth are four times more likely to commit suicide. Let me ask, do you truly believe that we shouldn't be providing a safe environment for all of our students? Or are you giving in to the pressures of a small group of parents who have nothing better to do than sow hate and discord across this district instead of providing something supportive or actionable that doesn't further alienate an already marginalized group? The world is filled with hate. The world is filled with anger. The world is filled with people that fight their hardest to push their agendas on others. We simply want to provide a comfortable place for all of our kids to be who they are and not have to fear of being judged or ostracized. The community continues to vilify teachers. Now it feels that the board has made decisions to make things even more hostile due to litigation from parents who are here tonight who are afraid that other people are providing more support to their kids than they can. There are many teachers and others that won't get up here and speak out against this because these opposing groups of people have created a public witch hunt against teachers publicly saying that they will search us out and get us fired. I'm not afraid to stand up for what's right. I'm not afraid to say what needs to be said. And I'm not afraid to make others uncomfortable when it comes to doing what's right. Stop the hate. Stop the division. Let us do the things that we became teachers to do. Let us support our kids in the ways that we need. And please stop taking away the very little supports and the powers that we do have as teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Beverly Ledbetter, and uh, speaking on 16.7, and then David Berger. Thank you. We like to think of our schools as a safe place for students to find structure and protection, but there are multiple reasons as to why a student may not feel accepted or understood at school. Many students feel lost, feel bullied, despite our teachers, our staff, and our administrators' best efforts to curb bullying. Safe spaces help the students who feel unaccepted for whatever reason regain their sense of belonging when they can talk to other students who feel the same emotions. Safe spaces can help those students feel empowered to speak up and receive the support they need to believe and to achieve. It gives them a sense of belonging and support, and not just support from the teacher, but from fellow students who come together as a kind of community. We know that research shows that a sense of belonging is essential for learning. A safe space or a safe zone sticker on an educator's door signals to students that bullying and harassment will not be tolerated. Many people think of a safe classroom, a safe place as a rainbow sticker and only for the LGBTQ community, but it's more than that. Many years ago, First Baptist Church in Dade City had a program called Campus Life. I happened to have fourth period lunch during a period planning during that period of time, and students would bring their Bibles, their lunches, and come and openly discuss the Bible in my classroom. They had a safe place to come and share Christian fellowship, knowing that they would not be harassed or questioned. A safe place to be who they were. Teachers, listen. Many years ago when I was teaching alternative ed, I had a young man come to me and tell me that he was going to kill himself over the Thanksgiving break. He told me that he could not take his father's abuse any longer and that he was taking care of a neighbor's animals and that someone would find him if he, he killed himself there. Immediately I went to the guidance department, immediately we called his father, and I still remember what that man said. He said his son didn't have the guts to do it. 
every hour during that weekend, Winnie White and I called that young man to let him know and remind him that he was important, that he was special, and that we cared about him. And when he showed up Monday morning, I took an index card, I wrote his name, I wrote teacher assistant, and I had some little stickers, and I stuck these little stickers on. I took him over to Pete Bohannon, who showed him how to use all kinds of AV equipment. We got him through the ninth grade, we got him to Pasco High. We lost track of him after a while. Years later, I was in McDonald's, and a tap on my shoulder, and it was that young man. And he told me that we made a difference to, in his life, that he felt accepted. And then when he pulled out his wallet, he pulled out a tattered old index card with his name and multiple stickers on it that he had kept all of his life to remind him that people cared. And that is what a safe space is. And that's what we do as teachers. We care for our students and we provide a place where they feel loved and accepted. Please allow that to continue and remember that young man because it may be some other young man or young lady who has that problem. Thank you. Thank you. Lena LaBerba speaking on 16.7, 16.10, and then Rebecca Ye England. David Berger. Oh, Mr. Berger. Berger. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, David Berger, you're up before. Uh, is that your wife or your daughter? Okay. Or no, a completely different one. Okay. Thank you, David LaBerber. David Berger. Good evening, Superintendent Browning school board members, Madam Chairman. Um, I had prepared remarks, but a lot of people have spoken on the same points that I wanted to point out regarding suicide awareness and bullying. So I'm just going to speak as an educator of Pasco County Schools for over 20 years and an educator for almost 30. Um, also being a gay educator, I have dealt with many students in my career who have over the years felt comfortable being in my classroom just because they couldn't be safe at home. They knew that if they went home, they had to be someone else. There were students who couldn't attend the GSA that I sponsored over the years because their parents wouldn't let them. These students had nowhere. But the moment those stickers became a part of our classroom, things changed. Those students became more vibrant. They realized they had purpose. They realized they were being protected within the school amongst the peers that they saw every single day. These are children who, for some reason, they would go home and they couldn't be their authentic selves. And having grown up without this environment in the 70s and 80s, I could relate to that. But as an adult and being in the classroom with students, I have seen students thrive when they know that they are being taken care of in the classroom, in the hallways, in the offices by people who display a simple little sticker. And I know that it's become a contentious point within the county because of other groups who somehow are threatened by students or by people because of their sexual orientation. But they're human beings. They're students who deserve respect, compassion, kindness. They deserve all of the things every other student does because we can't have an all students matter approach. That's like saying all lives matter. Well, those things can't happen until LGBTQ students matter as well. They have to be protected because we've already heard the YRBS data about suicide. I've also seen students over the years who have contemplated this. I've talked to students who've been bullied, not only by friends or supposed friends, but by their own family members because of who they are. We have to protect our students and keep them safe from harm. And by taking those little pieces of paper off of our doorway, you've done more harm than good. When students found out this was the case, I had many students who looked concerned at me. Like, are we still going to be safe in your room? Are we still going to be safe in your class and other classes? I said, of course you will. It doesn't change how people behave. But it's a visual, and it's a very important visual. Because those kids, when they walk around the building, if they're not seeing things, even if they're the quietest student in the building, they know, OK, at least I know I'm safe in these places, and I can be who I am, or at least feel comfortable, and I can breathe. So I implore you to figure out ways in the county, if the stickers are gone, to help these students feel better about themselves so that they're not going to take their own lives or bully other students or be the victim of bullying themselves. So I just wanted to leave you with, as an educator, I fight for those who can't fight for themselves. I hope the district will do nothing less. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right. All right. Lena Larbar. La Bar 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 mouthful, uh, 16.7 and 16.10, and then Rebecca Yingling. 
It was La Barbara. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, well, thank you for allowing us the chance to speak. I'm a little disappointed at myself for not attending these meetings any sooner before members of the public brought forth some really harmful language towards some students and teachers um, before the bullying of the teachers in the LGBT community began, before the disparaging remarks and accusatory claims started to fly, before those with sometimes no connection to the county or those who hold certain religious beliefs brought forth allegations of indoctrination of students with a woke agenda or something like that. I've been in this county for 22 years as a teacher. This idea of bullying obviously is not anything new, and unfortunately the realities of suicide have occurred not just within with our students, but with adults in our buildings and in the community as well. However, though, through our own district trainings, as you've already heard tonight, we've been told that students who belong to the LGBTQ community are affected disproportionately. Those addition of those safe space stickers a few years ago was really well received by most people, by most students, most adults, most teachers in the community. Most had no problem with them whatsoever. In fact, most students didn't even realize they were there until others had to point them out. However, when the concern was brought to the board that the term safe space is inappropriate, Mr. Browning himself sent out an email saying how we're going to get rid of them because they became a flashpoint in the community, it seemed like we were backsliding a little bit. The idea of a sticker with a rainbow, meant to show acceptance of all, can become a weapon for intolerance. We've gone backwards, folks. The district rhetoric support for all students sounds great in an election year, when we put out public statements, when we put our teacher trainings together. But when individuals came with threats of lawsuits and banged the drums of anger and fear, leadership caved to the pressure. The point is that teachers and students were not consulted in these decisions. Decisions made for them by people who don't even know them, by those who sought to make teachers, ones who genuinely care about the mental health and well-being of not just LGBT students, but many others who need to trust an adult to hear them, to make them not feel wrong or small or not important. These are the exact same feelings that we've been made to feel by some of the public commentary, and we're trying to keep our kids from having to feel those things by providing those safe spaces and giving them someone to talk to when they just feel like they need someone to turn to in that moment, they can find a safe space. There's nothing wrong with that term safe space. Yes, all schools should be safe, but we know the reality is that sometimes a space may not be as safe as another space. The hallways may not be as safe as a classroom. So what is wrong with a little sticker that says, hey, you're safe in here? You can come to me and talk to me, and you're accepted. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to pass judgment. I'm not going to put those beliefs out there on you to make you feel small or make you feel wrong. Suicide awareness means making all students feel seen and heard. I ask that the district stand up to the bullies in this community. Please stop letting them insert their political ideology Thank into the very so few much. safe spaces that are even left for our students in this world. Thank you, Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Rebecca Yingling on 12.9. And then uh, Angelica uh, Chirino. I'm going to, um, 12.9, I'm also going to go address the bullying as well. Um, we have a 12.9, we have a bid for a three year contract with Simpson Environmental Services. We've been with them for almost 10 years. This would be a three year renewal. Um, this is Wilton Simpson's company. I noticed in the past our contracts were 200000 a year, and now this one seems to be um, a three-year contract. We're at $1.5 so that would equate to $500,000 a year. Did we do an RFP on this? I don't know because I can't see um, where we did an RFP. I know there was one done in 2019, but um, I just want to um, – the last one, they had their points. They almost got 100%, and when I was in the business world, that's – an RFP scoring almost 100% was like next to impossible. So I found that curious. I would like to see an RFP. If not, maybe we can do an RFP um, before we approve this again, being the expense is so much more than the previous contract. Um, I'll address bullying. Um, bullying. The district bullies. We bully kids. We dox them. We dox them on public documents. We allow teachers to share students' names on their social media posts, share their names with extremist groups in order to dox the child, the innocent child who did nothing wrong. Should all be ashamed. You guys don't have due diligence to protect minors' names. 
Um, safe space stickers, let's talk about those. These safe space stickers, do you see, see the shirt? Gays Against Groomers, huge organization. They've had it. They're against this indoctrination of the school. They're against the safe spaces. The entire school should be the safe space. A teacher should, shouldn't not support a kid if they're being bullied, regardless of their religious orientation, their, their sex orientation. And the other thing, let's look at Pineview Middle School. You want to talk about bullying? The mural we had up there, it said um, hate speech if you didn't agree with the 100-something different genders. So you're telling kids of faith that if they say they believe there's only two sexes, that they're, they're preaching hate speech. This is to 12-year-olds. Bullying starts from the top down. Maybe when you guys can stop bullying, maybe it'll set an example to the students. And another thing, teachers are strangers to the parents. And Due to all the arrests we have in this county, we know not every teacher is a safe space. Um, so let's just say no teacher has the right to tell my child to keep secrets from them. Do we look at Clay County? They're suing. They tried to transition that student. The school only called the parents after the daughter tried to commit suicide. My child will decide, I will decide, not the teacher with my child in private. They're my children. I decide what they'll be. No teacher's going to do that. No, no, nobody in this district's going to do that. You don't have that right. It's out of your bounds, and thank God for the laws. Thank you. All right, Ang uh, Angelica, um, Angelica uh, Torino on 16.7. Okay. Yes, you're up. 1.8 million LGBTQ youth in this country seriously consider suicide. This can be translated to about 45% of LGBTQ as stated previously. My name is Angelica Torino, a senior at Wesley Chapel High School, and as I have been standing up here talking to you, one child that identifies as gay has tried to take their own life. This could be your friend, your sibling, but most importantly, this could be your child. Channing Smith, for example, was a 16-year-old teen from Tennessee that killed himself because he was outed. The bullying and harassment was so bad that he believed it was best to take his own life. So I'm urging you as parents and teachers to start seeing gay kids as kids and not something wrong that needs to be fixed and realize that by taking away the safe space stickers, you are politicizing children who just want an environment where they know they are loved and supported. Because even though it should be a parent's job to love and support a child, that may not always be the case. And as the school board who has always made it their mission to pariah, 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 Prioritize mental health. It is your job to see those that are not just societally acceptable. Don't let it become someone you know before you start to care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Superintendent Browning. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, there's two kinds of decisions that are made in this state. There's decisions made in Tallahassee, and then there's decisions made locally. And this decision, in large part, was made in Tallahassee. I, I guess I wasn't clear enough when I sent my email to district staff. So let me see if I can clarify my email to district staff about safe space stickers. This district has no choice, has no choice, because the law says under the Parents' Bill of Rights that there are no such things as safe spaces as we're defining safe spaces. Teachers are not permitted to have private, personal conversations with students any longer. Now, I know that runs counter to a lot of us. It runs counter to a lot of us. Who you ought to be talking to about this law are members of the Florida legislature. You need to be talking to the governor of this state. 
Because for anyone to think that this district can pick and choose what laws we're going to enforce and which laws we're not going to enforce, that isn't the way it works. Whether you agree or whether you disagree with the law, the law is the law until it's overturned by the legislature or by a court of competent jurisdiction. I have no choice. So when teachers continue to think that they can have private, personal conversations with students, they are wrong. They run the risk of litigation. The district, under the law, runs the risk of litigation. And as the superintendent of this district, I cannot, in good conscience, place the district in a position where we are going to have to be fighting legal case after legal case after legal case. Now let me just also say the, the safe space stickers, I did not want anyone to hide behind or think that because they had a sticker on the window that it was some magical safe place that kids could still under the Parents' Bill of Rights still come to them and share personal information because it is not, it is not a safe space. The law has seen to that. Well, what's interesting though is where this superintendent and this board will get beaten up because we don't support all and each one of our students regardless of who they are. There are short memories in this room. Because if you remember what this board went through, two years, two solid years before the pandemic, every meeting, this board got pummeled because of LGBTQ rights. And I will just tell you, I'm going to go out and over, I resent the fact that there are folks out there that think that we've caved, we've changed, we've, there's no leadership. I think it's just the opposite. I think if anybody that wants to sit in this seat and tell you, we don't care what the law is, we're going to do what we want to do, they will not last long in public office. It will not happen. Does this mean that we don't care because we've taken a sticker off of a door that we do not care about kids that identify as gay or as transgender or lesbian? Is that what that sticker means? No, that is not what that means. And there is no conflict between our policies regarding bullying and harassing and making sure that each one of our students that's a member that comes to school in this district is in a safe learning environment. That was the that was the place that I planted the flag for the two years prior to COVID when I was getting pummeled, when this board was getting pummeled. And my response to them was this, and it remains the same today. I don't care what you are. I don't care what persuasion you are. I don't care if you like boys or whether you like girls. It is no business of mine. But as long as you're in this district to get an education, it will be done in a safe learning environment. That's the end of the story. And, and Madam Chairman, I'm not going to apologize for my passion tonight because this district has worked hard. It has worked tirelessly hard over the last 10 years that I've been superintendent to ensure that every student that we serve is going to be in a safe learning environment. All we want is for teachers to understand they are prohibited by state law of having those private, personal conversations with students. That's what that means. I do not want teachers, my teachers, our teachers, getting in the crosshairs of a parent that disagrees with that interpretation and takes you, us, to court. 
we need to move on with the meeting, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Madam Chair, if I can, before we move on, I just wanted to say really quickly um, that pursuant to board policy, we have an hour designated for public comment. Public comment on this segment was 24 minutes and 30 seconds, leaving the balance for the comment on non-agenda items. It's just my job to point that out to the board so that when we get to the point of an hour under board policy, that says that's the time that the board can at least consider appropriate action for any leftover speakers who haven't had a chance. And we have about 24 or 25 cards for non-agenda items uh, at this point. So just want to make that point for the record. All right, thank you so much. All right, that brings us to uh, school member reports. Start with Mr. Altman. Uh, I don't have no. any tonight, Madam Chair. Oh. United School Employees. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> On the bottom of the, this page, United School Employees. I did not mean to overlook you, Don Peace. I am not wearing a sling tonight. Congratulations. Because <laughs> apparently Mr. Altman didn't get the email that that means leave that limb alone. <laughs> so I'm trying to act a little more normal tonight, but I am still sore. But I am not wearing a bow tie. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Superintendent Browning, Attorney Alfonso, Chair Armstrong, Honorable Board Members and District Staff, good evening. I hope you're all well. I believe that you will find my report tonight generally favorable. On August 31st, the Instructional and SRP Bargaining Teams of USEP and the District met and formally agreed to terms on economics. This was something that we talked about at the end of last year that we we're going to prioritize to try to get money in people's pockets early this year. For the instructional employees, both sides agreed to a 2.7 TSIA increase for those with a year of service and a 2.7% COLA for anyone hired before January 4th, 2022. This is a total salary increase of 5.4% for most instructional employees the largest in quite some time. The union and district also agreed on an increase in the board contribution to the health insurance benefit package of $379.94, bringing the total benefits contribution to over $7,800 per employee and still maintaining a free to the employee insurance plan. The increases will be retro to July 1, 2022. The SRP settlement is a little more complicated. Each SRP who has a year of service credit for last year will see a salary increase to $15 an hour or 5%, whichever is greater. The average increase for the majority of SRP will be far greater than that, with many being in the double digit range. The teams also agreed to a placement schedule and salary grid, which will compensate longtime employees and begin to address compression on the SRP side. They will also see the same board insurance contribution and health insurance package. It should also be noted, and this is important, that these increases for SRP will be retro to July 1 rather than waiting until October as the law requires. Both sides signed an MOU, which will allow for payroll to begin processing these increases now instead of waiting for ratification. There are still some outstanding MOUs on the instructional side and further discussion on proposals for SRP. However, the economics portion of this year's settlement took place earlier than has happened in a number of years. This is huge for our employees. Once this year's negotiations are completed, and we are going to the table for both SRP and instructional on Wednesday, and hopefully we can wrap it up then, 
USCP and the district will begin conversation on prioritizing the referendum funds and trying to address areas we've been unable to deal with up to now because of limited unfettered dollars coming from Tallahassee. I believe that's been spoken about a number of times. August was a very good month for both the district and the union. USEP was able to meet the legislative requirement to remain the bargaining agent for district employees. We passed the referendum and we settled economics early. While I understand the district's legal intent of the announcement re removing safe place signs, I would ask that the district personnel take a little better look at the timing of such announcements. It would have been nice to celebrate our collaborative economic efforts for more than a day. USEP continues to work with district staff on items of concern, but welcome the return to a more normal school year. With the return of four school board members, and we'll know the fifth member soon, it appears that we can anticipate a return to the rigorous programs that were in place pre-COVID and help our students make up for lost instruction. USEP looks forward to working to make this happen. Thank you. All right, Mr. Altman. I uh, don't have any committee reports this week. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. I had a, a EHOC, which is Health and Wellness Committee. Uh, we are continuing to discuss our wellness champion, champions goals, which includes delivering updates on the programs, campaigns, and resources that are coming and provide support and resources to the wellness champions, discuss incentives for incentives for on-campus challenges and receive input on ways to grow the Wellness Champion Network. Uh, there's a smoking vape, vape, excuse me, a smoking slash vape program for students that was discussed that if, um, a stu for example, if a student gets in trouble for smoking or vaping on campus, they can uh, be participate in the program and it will help um, balance against any punitives that came as a result. And um, we are continuing our improvement on our website continually that interacts with employees. That's it. All right, Mrs. Okay. Bodwin. Um, there, we had a Head Start, Early Head Start Policy Council meeting on Thursday. The mission in early childhood programs is serving families so all children can learn and grow in a healthy, nurturing environment. They have a heart logo with little puzzle pieces and that focuses on teaching children, ensuring access, empowering families, investing in each other. As you know, we have shared governance with, governance with Policy Council. The school board assumes the legal and fiscal responsibility for early Head Start and Head Start and safeguards federal funds. The Policy Council assumes responsibility for the direction of the program and can approve or disapprove special actions, procedures, and plans. There was information shared, uh, provided about conscious discipline and teaching students how to regulate their big feelings. They learned coping skills to move from being upset to being calm. Students learned to self-regulate and breathe to reduce stress and anxiety. Head Start and Early Head Start staff partners with parents to provide these comprehensive services. A goal is for families to feel empowered and set up for kindergarten success. Mrs. Wallen explained how using the Gallup strengths, I wanted to mention this because we talked about uh, Gallup at the last board meeting and I had, had some concerns as other board members. So it, uh, she did share uh, how she was using Gallup strengths and how it can increase engagement of staff, which directly impacts students. Staffs at Bexley and Trinity are working on strengths and using Gallup data and have seen an increase in staff engagement through this work. A reminder, and I have mentioned this before, but that students can check out library books at Pasco County Libraries using their student ID or lunch number. Uh, last year's policy council was dissolved as is required and new offices were elected for the 22-23 school year. Thank you to the parents who serve on the board and the council as well as the community representatives and our amazing early childhood staff. I want to share just a little bit of data. Um, the enrollment in Head Start and this is up to date for August, is 541 students, early Head Start is 105, and there are six expectant mothers in that program. 
The number of children on the waiting list, there's 317 students on the waiting, children on the waiting list for Head Start, 163 of which are eligible, income eligible. For early Head Start, we have 141 students on the wait list, 112 of those are income eligible. And I always want to share that data because I, I think it's important to know that we, we'd like to be able to serve more students if we could. And that's it. That's all I have for me. I had no committees meeting. Okay. And I had no committees meeting. Uh, Monday, I will, the Architect Selection Committee will be interviewing finalists for our next uh, K-8 that we're going to be building. All right, so that brings us to um, Superintendent Browning. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, there are two items I need to have pulled from the agenda tonight. Uh, the first one is item 12.3 which is a memorandum of an understanding between Pasco High School and the Pasco County Fair Association regarding uh, the use of certain properties and facilities. Uh, we'll bring that one back at a later date. And then I also want to pull uh, item 13.4, which is the tangible personal property inventory for fiscal year 21-22. There's some work that still needs to be on that list. Um, let me just uh, close by... by letting the board know about something that's, that, that's happened that's pretty special. Um, we've been engaged uh, in this district uh, for a number of years um, with All Pro Dads. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty cool organization where uh, it is, it's dads that are involved primarily uh, in, our, in our elementary schools. Um, but they uh, come to school once a month with their son or daughter, uh, breakfast is provided. Uh, there's a program, there's curriculum, there's lessons that parents go through with their, with their students. And uh, it is gratifying when you see, you know, I think there's this expectation that maybe I'm, well, I think there's this expectation that moms are always involved with their kids' education. And sometimes uh, the dad defaults to the mom. But in All Pro Dads, the dads are involved, uh, actively involved. And um, Mr. Altman and I had gone to an event in Tampa a, almost a year, over a year ago, I guess it was. And it was sponsored by All Pro Dads. And uh, we've had uh, probably a handful or more of our schools that have been involved with All Pro Dads. And I just want the board to know and our public to know uh, that uh, Mr. Altman um, has always been a supporter of All Pro Dads. But uh, he is such a supporter of ensuring that our dads are engaged with their students' education, that Mr. Altman has paid the registration fee of $50 for every one of our elementary schools for those schools that have chapters of all pro dads. Mr. and Mrs. Altman, excuse me. I keep forgetting about Laura. Um, Alan and Laura uh, have always been dear, dear friends of ours, uh, but I will tell you, um, Alan's commitment to All Pro Dads, and I think more importantly, it's not so much to All Pro Dads, but it's his commitment to the kids in this district and doing whatever it takes to ensure that, ma that dads, in this case, are engaged with the education of their kids. So as I always say on behalf of this superintendent and this board, we want to thank you for your commitment to our district and our kids. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be sure to share that with Mrs. Altman as well. She read the check. <laughs> That's all I have, Madam Chairman. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Gadd. Um, I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, earlier, um, um, an item in the agenda was referenced regarding uh, Simpson Environmental. Want the board to know that all appropriate statutory guidelines and regulatory processes were followed uh, in that bid. It was rebid in 2019. As a part of that bid process, it had a three-year extension, and the 1.5 million um, contracted amount is just a continuous servicing, continuing service contract. Um, as you may or may not know, Simpson Environmental provides 
for lack of a better term, hazmat services. If we get into a building or something and we have asbestos into that building, we have to stop what we're doing immediately. We can't wait to bid out someone to come in and take care of it. So that's why we have contracts like this. And I just want to assure the board that there is absolutely nothing unusual about that contract. And we have many of contracts in this district that match that contract. Thank you. Mr. Shibley. Good evening, board members. Um, there is an addendum to item 11.1 uh, that has been uploaded uh, into board docs as part of the agenda um, this evening. Um, I also want to echo um, many of the uh, comments made by Mr. Peace about the settlement um, and just again wanted to, to point out that um, it is indeed uh, probably the largest um, increase in salary increase we've seen in our employees since prior to uh, the housing burst recession uh, back in 2008. So. Um, it truly is historic from, from that standpoint. Uh, every employee uh, is going to see at least a 5% base increase if they had a year of service last year. Uh, the minimum teacher salary is increasing uh, to $46,425. Uh, the minimum hourly rate for all of our uh, non-exempt employees is going up to a minimum of $15 an hour and in some cases more. Um, we also have some targeted compression and market adjustments that were made to specific salary schedules um, to, to try and remain competitive in those areas. Um, we also completely covered all of the increases to the Florida retirement system that were passed along to the district um, by the legislature this past session. Uh, and as was also mentioned, uh, we uh, <clears throat> provided an additional almost $400 per employee per year towards uh, the district's comprehensive health insurance package. So uh, again, thank you for the board's support uh, in getting to where we are today. I do think it was uh, an excellent thing for our employees and uh, an important first step in what we are trying to do to uh, kind of take the lead in the Bay Area in terms of employee compensation. So thank you. Um, just for uh, the purposes of dates and, and uh, dates that employees might want to know, uh, we do anticipate those salary increases hitting paychecks uh, on 930, uh, which is the last uh, payroll in September. Uh, and we then anticipate running a special payroll on uh, October 21st, uh, which would then uh, provide the retroactive pay to all of the employees that are entitled to retro. So those are our targets right now and we are working diligently to make sure that we meet those timelines. Um, I do also want to note that one of the items in the agenda tonight is the um, teacher salary increase allocation plan. Um, that Those funds are just a portion of the 5.4% uh, uh, salary increase settlement for the teachers, uh, but I do need board approval on the plan to submit to the state so the state will release the funds. Um, so for right now, we're kind of fronting those funds in anticipation of state uh, release of that funding. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, but Mrs. Coons. Good evening, thank you. Um, I'd first like to ask that you pull item 12.4 from the agenda. Um, there has been an issue with the homeowner and we will not be bringing that back. That is um, a request for an access agreement, so I'd like to ask that that please be pulled. And then also I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up item 16.9, National Custodial Appreciation Day. Um, I have the pleasure of working with Mark Fox and his team, and it doesn't take a special day to know what they do for our schools and for our students every day. We don't always um, see them out in the front of the school and, and recognize them, but this is an opportunity to thank that team for all that they do at our schools every day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Good evening, board members have some highlights to share with you. First from our career technical and adult education. September is Workforce Development Month. So our governor has proclaimed September as Workforce Development Month in Florida. And this is in recognition of the collaborative efforts to make Florida the best state in the nation for workforce education by 2030. Workforce Development Month is in Florida is a time for us to celebrate the progress made towards strengthening our workforce education opportunities for Floridians. And becoming the number one state in workforce education by 2030 has been a central goal of our governor, legislator, and the commissioner, and we continue to see incredible results. I have some STEAM STEM updates for you. Um, at Marlowe, we are focusing in on our family engagement. So first, we want to say a very special thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Altman, because James Marlowe held their first all-pro dad meeting on Tuesday, September 6th, which was led by PE coach Zach Milleron, with 15 families attending it. So it was awesome to see our dads and our children enjoying breakfast and communicating together. 
Also, want to let you know that Marla will be hosting their family academies on September the 20th for primary and intermediate on September 27th. These will be opportunities for families to bring their children together for fun learning nights with a focus on our collaborative STEAM challenge and breakout sessions. At Centennial Elementary School, just want to let you know that all of our students have set their personal goals for reading, writing, math, and STEAM, as well as citizenship for first quarter. So they've kicked that off with their uh, STEM challenge, and the fifth graders are already starting their science fair uh, projects, so we're very excited about that. We are going to be hosting a pet rally at uh, Bayonet Point Middle School as we are kicking off and celebrating last year's FSA scores, perfect scores, as well as uh, setting the stage for our sixth graders. At Kirkland Ranch Academy, we have actually had our first industry certification test given to our students, and all of the students except one passed. And so we are just very excited. This was in our automotive program. And the one that didn't pass only missed by one question. So we are sure that in 20 days, they'll be ready again. And then last but not least, I want to give a very special thank you to Joe Partlow, who is the Chief Technology Officer at ReliaQuest, which uh, donated 26 Dell Optiplex desktop computers to Wendell Crin Technical High School Cyber Security Program. Uh, ReliaQuest has also hired two of our students, you know we love to brag about that, Alex uh, Capro and June Obugan. I don't think I said that right, but he knows who he is, or she does, as full-time employees. And so Mr. Partlow said that he was very impressed with them and would like to hire more of our students this year. So this is a great partnership that we're very excited because they are one of the premier companies in Tampa for cybersecurity. So as always, we are preparing today for tomorrow's workforce. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Taylor. Good evening, Madam Chair and board members. Um, so I just wanted to go back to the budget a little bit and point out two items that weren't really discussed. Um, the most significant change from the tentative budget to the final budget was the addition of the COPS, which you approved back in July, and the issuance of that. Um, since we did not have all that information in the tentative budget, we did add that into the final budget, and that was the differences between the two amounts you were looking at. So that was uh, the debt and the proceeds from the $87 million in bond funding we received. Thank you for that. And then also, um, we did add this year a five-year work plan um, into the budget. That was not normally a page that was included in there. It's based on the 10-year plan that we showed you at the workshop. Uh, we look to have that in every future budget, so the first five years of that plan will be included in there for some additional information. And um, when we have to send the work plan to DOE in October, that'll be a precursor for that. We won't have to re-advertise and do that again. So I'm trying to streamline that process a little. Um, for item 13.3, which is our annual financial reports, um, these are required to be approved and submitted to DOE by September 11th each year because that fell on a Sunday. Um, we will be submitting tonight before midnight mm -hmm. with your approval. Um, I do want to let you know some of the information that is included in there is still in draft form. We are waiting from reports from charter schools, their final audits from their audited financial statements. We're waiting on some actuary reports for pension and um, FRS and things like this. This is normal. They're considered draft financials at this time. All of that information will be updated when you receive the act for the audited financial reports, hopefully coming to you in January. Um, and then also I would like to express my thanks as superintendent did for the finance department for all their time and commitment they put into providing these. And I really couldn't have asked for a better team during my first year here. They were really great to work with, and um, I think we're off to a great start. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Mrs. Hilton. Yes, good evening. I have said a lot, so I'm just going to keep my comments brief. 
Um, we are in American Founders Month for the month of September. This is an important month for civic literacy and one of our busiest months for our state required instruction. Patriots Day was yesterday on September 11th. Constitution Day is September 17th, commemorating the signing of the original U.S. Constitution in 1787. And Freedom Week is the last week of the month, September 26th through 30th, which encourages instruction on the intent, meaning, and importance of the Declaration of Independence. And during this uh, week, you might remember that we begin the school day with a recitation of the opening from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Dot, dot, dot. Um, additionally, you may have possibly seen our district flyer promoting Celebrate Freedom Week with patriotic colors, recognizing American heroes and the flags that represent our freedom. And we invite you to join us by tagging um, hashtag Pasco Honors Freedom Month. Um, there are also many proclamations I know you will address on the agenda tonight, but I did want to highlight one um, resolution for Disability History and Awareness Week um, upcoming in October, weeks upcoming in October. Um, this is, uh, there is great support of this week in highlighting our device accessibility and other strategies for support of our students with disabilities with a joint project between OLL and OTIS. They've done this for the last couple of years and it really does help our teachers to know exactly how they can use their devices and other tools to address our students with disabilities. And lastly, I want to let you know that Dr. Sarah Capwell, Deputy Director, and Valora Cole, Governing Board Chair, are here to represent item 10.5, should you have any questions for that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Poe, do you have anything tonight? No, All right. Uh, Mr. Barker? Nothing for me this evening. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mrs. Gant? Nothing this evening. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mrs. Hitzler Nettles? <laughs> Good evening. I would like to share a couple of updates with the board this evening. Um, I'd like to let you know that with support from the Office for Leading and Learning, both Pasco Middle School and Paul R. Smith Middle School will be embarking on the National Institute for Magnet School Leadership process through Magnet Schools of America, seeking that national certification and recognition that I know you're familiar with for several of our other schools who have recently earned it. This does involve an arduous reflective process that will help us continue to refine our magnet practices and through the year-long process they will reflect, assess, and provide evidence on the five pillars of Magnet Schools of America which include diversity, innovative curriculum and professional development, academic excellence, high quality instructional systems, and family and com community partnerships. Um, altogether there are 40 indicators and we look forward to these two schools joining our growing number of nationally recognized schools. I have a school announcement from Pineview Middle School where we have two FFA students who are year three students, um, Nicholas Campbell and Abby Perilla. They entered and won the state FFA AgriScience Fair for event for Division II Food Products and Processing Systems, which is pretty incredible. They then went on and entered the national preliminaries. And in the national preliminaries, there are six divisions in each of six different agri-science categories. So they decided to work as a team. And part of the process is they can amend their project. They did so, worked as a team, and they were recently notified by the National FFA organization that the Pineview Middle School FFA members, Nick and Abby, are national finalists. This means they are one of three Florida finalists within the six divisions of the food products and processing systems category. I think they just wanted to see how many things I could say without tripping up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and they're the only students in Pasco qualifying for this national FFA event, which is a wow. huge and amazing accomplishment for these two year three students. Um, for those who aren't familiar with MYP, that is language, that means they're eighth graders, which is pretty incredible. They created some firsts not only for Pineview Middle School, um, but it's their first time qualifying for a national FFA competition and the school's first time ever in history to attend. So we're very excited about that. And then finally, I have a heroic story. Last Wednesday, September 7th, Cypress Creek Middle School had a real life superhero come to the rescue of one of its employees. Food and nutrition staff member Peggy Getty saved the life of our assistant food and nutrition service manager, Lisa Gray, when she began to choke on her lunch. Uh, Ms. Getty realized what was happening. She quickly jumped into action, performed the Heimlich maneuver, dislodging the food that was blocking Ms. Gray's airway. Both Mrs. Gray and Cypress Creek Middle School are thankful for Ms. Getty's heroic action.
Dr. Isles. I have a few celebrations that I'd like to share with the board tonight. Um, the first is that Zephyr Hills High School has begun a junior chapter. It has a growing ag program and as of right now has 278 students and two advisors. So we're excited about that. We also, this past Saturday, had both Zephyr Hills High School and Gulf High School band that performed at the USF game at halftime, so that was very exciting for us. And at Zephyr Hills High School, we had the Zephyr Hills Chamber of Commerce once again supporting and uh, recognizing our students of the month, and Alyssa Rojas was recognized. She's involved on campus in journalism, yearbook, being a peer mentor to new students, and is always willing to help with whatever we have going on. Also want to give a shout out to the Pasco High School PTA. They are presently doing a food drive for Metropolitan Ministries. And at Mitchell High School, we have a student, Aiden Miller, who is on Team USA under 18 baseball team. He's playing in the worlds right now, and he has um, reached base on all eight times he has gone up to bat. So I could definitely share more things with you, but I'm going to leave it at, at that. But I do just want to echo what um, Betsy said. Thank you to all of our custodial staff, all that they do each and every day. We appreciate them. All right. Thank you so much. All right. There are no exp uh, expulsion recommendations or hearings. That we move to the consent agenda. Are there any items you wish to move to the action agenda? No, all my things Matt, are answered. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I'll move approval of the consent agenda with the addendum of 11.1 .1 and the exception of 12.3, 13.4, and 12.4. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. That brings us to. The action agenda. First from being 16.1, administrative and non-instructional, non-bargaining, salary and benefit increases. So moved. Second. Okay, first Harding, Harding second Bodwin. Any discussion? I just want to thank um, everyone that worked so hard on this and the collaboration between the union and the district staff. Um, I really appreciate all their hard work. Um, and I know that with the referendum that's coming in the next year, I think we're going to, like Mr. Shibley said, we're working really hard to be on the up and up. So I just wanted to say thank you. And <clears throat> All right. We All can still celebrate. Mm -hmm. All yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 16.2, instructional economic package and the 2022-2023 school-related personnel uh, economic package. I move to approve. Second. Second. Right, first Bodwin, second Crumley. Any comments, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Motion carries. 16.3. I think my comments were for, for that, that one. one. So they I, were. I they apologize. Were. I read, so my comments are for that one. So okay. I apologize. <laughs> it's, I read it, instructional and non-instructional. It, 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 it's all good. It's, we knew it's what you meant. We, <laughs> I just want good. our teachers to know I'm grateful. All good. Yeah. Uh, 16.3, Day Spring MOU. Uh, June 21st, 2022, um, amendment. So moved. Second. Okay, first Harding, second Altman. All in fa Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 16.4, early release for students September 21st, uh, 2022, Gulf High School homecoming parade. And I have just have to comment, this is a special parade celebrating yes. 100, 100 years 100 for Gulf years. High School. Yeah. Yay! Go Bucks! The right. green ones. <laughs> All right, so I need a, a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Harding first, second Crumley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Um, 16.5, naming of the 6 through 12 school that's going to be located on the Angeline uh, property. We were all provided with a list, long list of names. Uh, yes, long it was list very long. Names. All right, so um, I need uh, no, any so comments? Mr. Uh, Mr. Haggerty, do you have 
something to uh, Are you going to read the I names? I think you've got no. it covered. We, we had it open for two weeks. We sought public input, and as you said, we got about 200 um, nominations, which you were made aware of. And uh, We're not going to read them all. No. No, no, no. no. The, the, they are in the board packet. They, you can look at them online. Uh, there was many that were uh, kind of very similar. Uh, so, so there weren't 200 unique names, uh, but there were some very similar things. Um, so at this point, a lot of times what we do is open up with someone making a, a motion of a name, and then we can have a discussion and move on from there. I have, I have one if you want me to. Okay. This is um, So how do I just do I say I'm make, I move to name name school. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. I can't talk. I move to name it Angeline Academy. Can I can I do a friendly amendment? <laughs> friendly. <laughs> well, 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 we don't she have needs a second wait, first. Second, okay, and then we can I'll discuss. second, okay. and then we discuss. Uh, uh, then we okay. can have a friendly oh, okay. discussion. <laughs> well, well, we can second. Now we can open it up for a discussion. Uh, I wanted to ask if you would consider adding on to that to Acad <laughs> Academy of Innovation. Yes, <laughs> because like you and I actually were at. Uh, an FSBA at the conference, and there was a lot, we went to a, uh, a session, and there was a lot of talk about branding and being consistent mm -hmm. with branding sure. and communication, and so I, I'd like to. So the second one, Angeline Innovation Ac Academy, Academy of yeah. Innovation. I kind of like it. Then when we can market that, even though it's not the same exact school as, as Kirkland Ranch, but we can market them together and we can get a friend, that make a friendly amendment on yeah. that. I second the amendment. Do we need to second the amendment? So, so, okay, so we got a uh, first. We, we got a first uh, Bodwin on on the amendment. I need a second. Um, oh, second. second. Oh, okay. Okay. Harding second. Can right. Can I just ask a question? I'm okay you with can. that. Yes. I'm okay with now that. Now open for discussion. Yes. I'm okay with that, and it's where I was headed. But then the Kirkland is a is a different type school, and the Angeline is more of a STEM steam. So I'm just asking. I'm okay yeah. either way, but I, the two that I had were Angeline Academy of Innovation or Academy of Science and Technology. I was leaning. To, I, I like that too. I was leaning towards Academy of Innovation because it leaves it open for the future if the school goes a different direction. Okay. But, but, you, know, but thinking, you know me. But what, what, I like the A for arts. Yeah. So what, what, which is I'm which struggle? Is, no I'll have there. to do STEAM if it's I go STEM. STEM. Uh, the I think the same. I have to agree with uh, Mrs. Bodwin when we're talking about uh, wanting something that's flexible. That no matter which direction the school goes to in the future, the name would apply. And I know uh, the Kirkland Ranch uh, School of Innova uh, Academy of Innovation is a different type school, but both of the schools are leading towards careers, uh, very, very much career oriented, uh, whether it's going to uh, the health field or going to one of the other fields, uh, engineering or, or whatever. So I, I do feel like even though they're different, the end goal is still the same. We're providing um, really high-level career um, forward-thinking curriculum. So are you saying, Angeline, Acad uh, Innovation Academy? Academy no. of Innovation. Academy, Academy of, Innovation of Innovation is what the, what the uh, amendment was. Um, all right. So um, all in favor of the amendment? Oh, can I just add something? And Mr. Gadd had sent us that explanation of Angeline, and, the and I thought it was a history of where the name came from, just for behalf of the public here. It's, uh, you know, there's going to be a Moffitt, huge Moffitt Center for Healing there in there, and providing, what, 16,000 uh, jobs or something at some point in it, at its, um, when it grows to its fruition, and obviously, that implies healing, and, and the well, that is about healing. And the name Angel, um, a lot of people equate that with healing, and so that's where the name came, Angeline. And so I like I liked that. Yeah, 
I also think like it, that too. And, and in fact, the, the community that's going to be built around it is going to be the Angelina Angel Yeah, community. and it gives you the location so, immediately. So, 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 I yes. always like those. It also yes. allows us, if we have to ever put an elementary school in there somewhere, we can kind of make it you know, connect. Yep. <coughs> Uh, right. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make you aware, um, I think that Ms. Armstrong alluded to that, but I was to told by Kartik Goyana with Metro Development that that will actually be the name of the community. It will be Angeline, yeah. Florida. Angeline. Um, and there's some special process you have to go through to do that, and he indicated they had done that, and that would be the name of the community. All right. Any other discussion? Um, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. So that would be the name of the school. So. All right. So we're very excited. All right. Angeline School of oh, Academy, Academy of Academy. Academy. Yeah. Excuse me. Angeline Academy, Academy of, of Innovation, Innovation will be our first six through twelve school located um, on the what will be the Angeline community. If you go out the Ridge Road extension out to the expressway, cross under the expressway, you're going to come to the school. The walls are already up. Uh, we're very excited about the school opening next fall. Um, all right, moving on. Oh, this is me. 16.6, .6, proclamation. We have six proclamations. Uh, I've got three school board members that are going to read them. So I'll let right, them I'll decide let who's going one. to go first. First proclamation is Attendance Awareness Month. Okay, whereas good attendance is essential to student achievement and graduation, and we are committed to dedicating our resources and attention to reducing chronic absenteeism rates with a focus starting in kindergarten and chronic absence, missing 10% or more of school for any reason, including excused and unexcused absences, or just two or three days a month is a proven predictor of academic decline and dropout rates. And whereas improving attendance and reducing chronic absence takes commitment, collaboration, and tailored approaches to particular challenges and strengths in each community, and whereas the impact of chronic absence hits low-income students and minorities particularly hard, if they don't have the resources to make up for lost time in the classroom, and they're more likely to face systemic barriers to getting to school, such as unreliable transportation, lack of access to health care, and or unstable or unaffordable housing, and whereas chronic absence exacerbates the achievement gap that separates low-income students from their peers. Since students from low-income families are both more likely to be chronically absence, absent and more likely to be affected academically by missing school. Absenteeism also undermines efforts to improve struggling schools, since it's hard to measure improvement in classroom instruction if students are not in class to benefit, and whereas chronic absence can be significantly reduced when we collaborate to monitor and promote good attendance and address barriers that keep children from school. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that this board uh, does hereby recognize and proclaim our schools will stand with the nation in recognizing September as Attendance Awareness Month, and we hereby commit to focusing on reducing chronic absenteeism to give all children an equitable opportunity to learn and to grow and to thrive academically, emotionally, and socially. I need a for motion. motion. So moved. Second. First Crumley, second Sorry, Bodwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 16.7 Proclamation Bullying Prevention Month. Oh, that's me too. Sorry. <clears throat> Whereas creating a safe school environment is essential to providing a world-class education for all students, and whereas one in three U.S. students say they've been bullied at school, and over 70% of U.S. students say they've witnessed bullying at school. And whereas, bullying can have devastating effects on students' physical health, emotional well-being, and academic achievement. And whereas 57% of the time, when bystanders intervene, bullying stops within 10 seconds. And whereas the District School Board of Pasco County has developed a comprehensive policy preventing and responding to bullying, including training for students and staff, and Pasco County Schools Together We Stand Student Leadership Initiative is committed to giving our students a voice in preventing bullying 
and uniting families, educators, and community partners in creating safe, supportive schools, and the District School Board of Pasco County further commits its resources to, provide, to promoting a safe, secure, and welcoming school environment and putting an end to all forms of bullying. Now, therefore, the District School Board of Pasco County does hereby join, hereby join the nation in recognizing October as Bullying Prevention Month as a symbol of our commitment to creating a culture of caring and respect for all members of our school community. I need a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, first Crumley, second Baldwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 16.8 Proclamation Hispanic uh, Heritage Month. Whereas Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates the accomplishments of Hispanic Americans who have enriched our culture and society and helped make America the incredible country it is today. And whereas National Hispanic Heritage Month starts in the middle of the month to correspond with the independence of many countries like Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Mexico, and Chile, and whereas Hispanic and Latino Americans represent an estimated 17.8% of the total U.S. population, making up the largest ethnic minority, and whereas Hispanic influences are tightly knitted in the culture and fabric of American life in areas such as music, food, art, cinema, politics, literature, and so much more, and whereas while Hispanic children learn about the heritage this month, all students can benefit from learning about Spanish history and culture. Now therefore be claimed that the District School Board of Pasco County, that is Hispanic Heritage Month, be observed in Pasco schools from September 15th to October 15th. So moved. Okay. Second. First Harding, second Bodwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 16.9 Proclamation, National Cust Custodian Workers Day. Whereas custodians are the unsung heroes of our schools and offices, they are hardworking individuals who dedicate countless hours to providing a clean and safe environment for our students, staff, and community. And whereas a custodian's day often starts before the sun rises and some work past sunset, they begin the day raising the flag, mowing lawns, cleaning up after breakfast and lunches, and maintaining a closing down stadiums. And whereas the work tire, they work tirelessly during the summer month, getting our schools clean, painting walls, waxing floors, and washing desks to create an environment for student staff and the community to be proud of. And whereas they greet students in the morning and sometimes are the first smiling faces that a child sees. And whereas each year on October 2nd, National Custodios Workers Recognition Day is observed. And whereas we are proud to recognize our district custodians, not only for their hard work, but also most importantly for the impact they have on our students' education. Now, there before it be proclaimed that the District School Board of Pasco County that October 2nd is recognized as the National Custodial Workers Recognition Day. So moved. Second. Right. First Harding, second Baldwin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right. 16.10 Proclamation Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Whereas more than 47,000 lives are lost annually to suicide, and whereas suicide is the tenth leading cause of death in the United States. And whereas public awareness, education, referrals, and treatment are keys to preventing further suffering and loss of life, whereas September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, now this board does hereby proclaim its support for education and awareness efforts in our schools designed to help students, teachers, and staff identify and act upon warning signs to prevent the needless loss of life from suicide. Adopted and resolved today. Motion. Motion. Second. First Altman, second Crumley, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 16.11 Resolution, Disability History and Awareness Weeks. A resolution designating the first two weeks in October as Disability History and Awareness Weeks and encouraging our schools to provide instruction on disability history, people with disabilities, and the disability rights movement. Whereas there are over 414,000 students with disabilities in Florida's K-12 education system. And whereas the Americans with Disability Act, Disabilities Act of 1990 is founded on four principles, inclusion, full participation, economic self-sufficiency, and equality of opportunity for all people with disabilities. And whereas key methods of promoting these four principles are for our schools to recognize the contribution, contributions made by people with disabilities and the disability rights movement through school curriculum, school assemblies, and other school activities. And whereas the Florida legislature also encourages cooperation among the school system, post-secondary institutions, 
and the community at large to promote better treatment and fair hiring practices for people with disabilities. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the District School Board of Pasco County that the board encourages schools to provide instruction on disability history, people with disabilities, and the disability rights movement, especially during the first two weeks of October, but also throughout the school year, and encourages other institutions to conduct and promote <coughs> educational activities on those subjects. Be it further resolved that the first two weeks in October be recognized as disability history and awareness weeks in Pasco County Schools, duly resolved and adopted on the 12th day of September, 2022. I move to approve. Second. All right, first, Baldwin second. Harding, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, off agenda item 16.12, extended school day. Move to approve. Second. First, Baldwin, second, Harding. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Off agenda item 16.13, uh, Red Apple contract. Moved. Second. Right, first, Altman. Second, Harding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, that brings us to individual school member reports. Uh, I have nothing tonight, Madam Chair. Okay. Mrs. Crumley. Uh, yes, I, I don't really have anything except I would just like to share one paragraph from the bullying prevention that we've just all agreed to and we are standing behind as a district. Um, it's, been, it's a heavy night tonight and we have a lot more speakers coming and I I just don't want anybody to think we don't care about their student or themselves in this district. I have three kids <laughs> and two granddaughters and I would fight like a dog for them. I'd fight like a wild dog for them. So I understand the passion here, and I understand how people feel on all sides of these arguments, or these, they shouldn't be arguments, they're discussions. But this district went through this for two years. I was the chairman for one of the years. Every school board meeting, we were bombarded and harangued and we stood for all of our students. And I know somebody didn't want us to say the word all of our students, but I have to stand for all of my students here. I have almost 85,000, and if you add in the parents and guardians, that's almost a quarter of a million people. They're looking at us every single day to protect their students, regardless of their sexuality, anything. And I don't want to say that I don't care, because I do care, but that is irrelevant. Our schools should be safe for all these kids. And I just want to read this paragraph, because we've already made this commitment to you. And it says, Pasco County Schools Together We Stand Student Leadership Initiative is committed to giving our students a voice in preventing bullying in uniting families, educators, and community partners in creating safe, supportive schools. And we really, the five of us, and the superintendent you heard him, we really mean this for every kid. And I know sometimes it doesn't feel that way, but we really do. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. For I can't that. say anything. Thank you for saying that. Uh, I wanted to acknowledge a few things here. There are parents still um, letting me know about late buses, and I know that staff is working diligently to rectify the situation. I also want to thank staff for updating the page that was previously titled Parent Bill of Rights to reflect more clearly what is contained there. This was made uh, because of feedback I received from a parent. The web page, when you click on it, now says Parent Bill of Rights and Legal Notices because there were other things there besides just the Parent Bill of Rights, so thank you. Uh, we have approved the uniform assessment calendar earlier uh, in the consent agenda, and I had also talked to staff earlier this week. Um, I am interested in finding out more about how these new assessments are impacting instructional time, since it appears they may not be completed in a class period in secondary schools. Um, I asked staff and was told it's still too early to know how disruptive this has been in the school day because we're still in the testing window. So we're in the first window uh, for the fast progress monitoring and 
I found out earlier today, half of the ninth and 10th graders have finished. So we haven't yet completed the testing window to collect more information, but I am interested in getting feedback from our staff and our school-based teachers and leaders once we complete the first window. I would also like to get some feedback on the elementary set assessments, both regarding the delivery and results. Um, so I just want to ask the, uh, ask the superintendent to keep the board um, informed when you know more information about that. That's good. Uh, I also wanted to, uh, I had pulled some data and then uh, Mrs. Hilton, she and I are uh, often on the same page with, with what we want to talk about. I had pulled some data uh, earlier this week and I wanted to, con from our website, because we do have a data dashboard there and you can look, it gets updated, every day it gets updated, but there are some things that take a little bit longer. So it is updated now with last year's uh, results, and I would just want to share a little bit of information. The data shows that 46,131 college credits were earned last year. So that includes AP, Cambridge, IB, and dual enrollment. And 372 advanced diplomas were earned. And that includes AP Capstone, ACE, which is Cambridge, AA degrees and IB diploma. And this is a significant savings for students who are pursuing post-secondary degrees. So congratulations to the students, the families, the teachers, excellent work by everyone. And then lastly, I too wanted to thank our staff who worked on the budget and worked with USEP with settling negotiations early this year too so we can move forward. So thank you to everyone who's worked on that. That's all I have. This is hard. Um, I wanted to again thank the Citizens Academy for being here. I don't know if anyone's still in here, but um, I hope you're learning a they lot. Are. Oh, they hi! <laughs> We're so glad you're here. Um, <laughs> so thank you again for being here. And um, like I said earlier in our dinner, if you ever have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to reach out. But we're really grateful for you for being here and wanting to learn more about our district. Um, I got to spend some time at River Ridge High School shadowing a disciplinary uh, discipline IA, Tracy uh, Finkelston, to learn all about her job. I didn't know what a discipline IA does on a daily basis, so I, um, a lot, she does a lot. So I um, shadowed her. Um, she for sure gets her steps in daily, and the relationships that she's fostered with her students, just absolutely wonderful. So I wanted to thank her. Um, I also got to learn more about the CIESIS program that we have at River Ridge. If you haven't been, I encourage you to go visit. Um, you also get to snuggle some babies, which is nice. Um, I wanted to thank Miss uh, Lisa Yeager for showing me around her um, wonderful program there. Um, I also wanted to continue to follow up on um, behavior. Um, I spent a lot of time this week again talking with students and um, staff about behaviors, and I know the superintendent has assured me that we are working on different procedures, um, but I'm just asking that we continue to follow up and make sure that our teachers and staff know that they're supported. I just heard of another incident um, the other day of a teacher getting hurt, and that's just not okay. Um, I, too, wanted to um, make a comment about transportation. Um, I know I'm getting a lot of phone calls about late buses and the lack of communication. I know Mrs. Kuhn has been working on that, so thank you, Ms. Kuhn, to you and your, um, your transportation department. Um, also, last meeting, I asked my peers if they would entertain um, writing a letter to the entire Board of County Commissioners about sidewalks and lighting. Um, and so I constructed a letter that I want to read out loud, um, and I think you guys all got a copy. Um, so if you guys agree with it, then we'll sign it tonight and we will send it to them. Um, dear Pasco County Commissioners, first, we would like to thank you for all that you do for our community. As you're aware, Pasco County Schools is in dire need of bus drivers. The school district has worked tirelessly to come up with creative solutions to try to meet the demands we have for transportation. This includes adding a fourth tier to our normal routes, maneuvering school start times, and most recently having to remove courtesy busing. Currently, we're short 58 drivers and 40 relief drivers, and this number does not include those who, leave, who are on leave or are absent. Because of this shortage, we found it necessary to eliminate the courtesy busing for secondary students. Per Florida statute FS100621, duties of the district school superintendent and district school board regarding transportation, and then I put the law, I'm not gonna read the whole law, but we highlighted like whose homes are more than reasonable walking distance as defined by the rules of state board education. And we defined, um, it defines a reasonable walking distance. <clears throat> and so I just put the laws there. Um, and then I said, because we no longer transport students who live within two miles, we have students who are walking to school in areas without sidewalks and or proper lighting. This is worrisome because safety is always our number one priority. Therefore, we're reaching out to you for help. 
A few months ago, Commissioner Moore and Commissioner Mariano mentioned the importance of getting these sidewalks in place so that our students have a safe area to walk to school. We're grateful for the support of the commissioners. However, we are now well into the school year and we are still in need of these sidewalks in the many areas of our county. Please help us get these projects done in a timely manner. We've attached the most recent safety committee meeting notes so that you may see the priority projects that our communities need completed as soon as possible so that our students have safe walking paths to school. We appreciate your support in getting these projects done in a timely manner, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. And then Mrs. Kuhn gave me the list of the priority, and we're, we've um, attached it to um, the letter to send. So are you guys okay with that? Perfect. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, and I'll ask Ms. Coon or Mr. Gab, but I believe there is a dedicated <coughs> funding source identified for those sidewalks. If I'm Do we need to add that in there? Yes. Okay. Uh, just as a reminder. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Um, so I, and and I could be wrong about that. No, you're right. We, we, we did have a conversation about this with the county last week. and. Okay. Um, they mentioned safe routes to schools. That is a rather long process. They said it also is not a lot of money. And then they also mentioned another fund. And then I, we asked about um, the Penny for Pasco and if the Penny for Pasco is successful with the renewal, if that would be an option. There are some projects within the Penny for Pasco okay. as well. So there are three different funding sources is what the county has uh, made us aware of. So can you email me those three? Yes. And then I can put them in the letter. And then what I'll do is if you guys are okay with it, I'll send it to Ms. Facemeyer. She can send it, she can put it on the letterhead and then she can send it to um, Chair Armstrong and she will sign it on behalf of all of us and then we will mail it if you guys are okay with That's that. That's good. We'll just add one little sentence in there to Perfect. remind them. Would okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oh, yes, uh, you Ms. Harding, I'm also gonna ask Ms. Kuhn to get with you because I wanna make sure that we're technically accurate because we've never provided transportation within the two miles. It's just that some courtesy Riders yeah, have okay. slipped in. I there. was reading from the law, so yeah, we'll I, make sure that it's yeah, all. Yeah, make sure that's that we fine. get it. Make sure the we'll courtesy talk. part is. Yeah, good idea. Okay. Um, I also wanted to say thank you, Mr. Browning, and to your communication department. Um, we've been. I, I don't know if you guys have seen an, an uptick of being made up aware of what's going on in the yeah. in the district. So thank you for listening to our concerns. Um, also, I've heard from a lot of parents that. Um, they've been feeling more connected. So um, I appreciate that. Um, and I also wanted to thank everyone who is involved with the parent loading page. I just think that this is gonna be huge for parental and community involvement. So thank you. All right. Um, okay. First on a more on a happy note, uh, Gulf High School, as I mentioned, uh, is celebrating their, their 100 year this year. And so the very active alumni at that school. So there's going to be, um, the, this Friday, they're going to dedicate the football game to the alumni night, to the celebration of the 100 year. So the alumni, are, they're touring the two old sc schools, started out, Gulf started out at Schwet, what's now known as Schwetman, and then Gulf High School moved to what's now Gulf Middle School and t before they moved to their new school. Uh, and then, which is now being replaced by a new school right <laughs> beside it. And the walls are going up in October. Those. So uh, it's going to be a very big uh, football night. Hopefully it doesn't rain uh, because they will be doing that alumni celebration. And then at homecoming, they're going to have a student celebration of the celebrating the 100 year. So that's why that parade is so important. So I really want to thank uh, Principal Morgenstein for uh, getting the community involved in this celebration, as well as making sure the students have a voice in the celebration. Um, and then to get on a more serious note, uh, you are asking for ideas for legislative platform. Yes. Okay. Um, and I believe, I don't have it written up. If I need to write it up, let me know, or if you just want to, to take it to the meeting. But I really do think uh, FSBA needs to get involved with removing the language about litigation of, of teachers. Uh, I do not think teachers should be uh, subject to lawsuits brought uh, for whatever reason. Uh, could be, by the time it got to court, it could be substantiated or not substantiated. Right. But I do not think a teacher should live in fear of being sued for something they may or may not have done. Um, 
So I, I really feel strongly about that, that that needs to be addressed. Um, and, and that, does everyone agree on yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. And also, sure. I, was, I had also jotted down flexibility and categoricals. Yes. Oh, always. Yeah. <laughs> I, always. I, I was kind of always a given. That. So yeah. It was a given, so I didn't make yeah, a big yeah, deal about it. But, uh, but, 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 this is for FSBA platform. This is for FSBA's platform. Yeah. Right, because but that I, I just really feel like the litigation part that. is just it's unfair. Yeah, no, unfair. Yeah, and that, that meeting is on October 7th. Okay. But if it's on there, there why should, could it not be on there? Oh, yeah. No, for the categorical flexibility. Too. Right, right, yeah. right. I think that's a great one. Okay. All right. Um, Superintendent. I hope you have good news for us. I don't. <laughs> oh, I have news. Are you canceling Friday? I have news that Friday's maybe hearing? it's unknown news. Oh. Um, just the the reality is there has been a lot a flurry of communication with uh, the attorney, both of the attorneys uh, involved in the Martin appeal that's set for Friday for four hours. Um, the last communication was right after five, after we already started, uh, I received uh, a text, or an email rather, from the employee's attorney, simply saying that he wants to evaluate whether to proceed or not with his clients, but he didn't think he could give me an answer today. So I'm hopeful to get an answer tomorrow, and I will immediately communicate that. In fact, even if I didn't, uh, the email thread includes um, district you know, staff as well as um, special counsel, and I, it probably has Ms. Huntsinger, so we'll have to fix that. So I'll, it, I'll revise the thread to make sure that everyone knows quickly, but I'll certainly pass along that word as soon as possible. And since we're talking about those, I just want to make sure everybody remembers to have your calendar marked for October 4th, because we'll have another, the, the level for the appeal grievance uh, on Canon. That that's board? immediately following the board meeting. For, I think, four hours is what's been reserved, so we're going to start oh, yeah. 11. at 11-ish and then proceed oh, for yeah. up to four hours. Is that the same one that Lynn Cabal emailed about? Was that yes, same? there okay. was a that was, request. That was unusual. I did, we don't usually get emails from Alvin. Yes, there was a request for a virtual appearance, and, and we I spoke with both the chair. I think that was McKnight, oh, Mr. Alfonso. No, so that is I apologize. I apologize. That's a one. Okay, my apologies. Okay. Anyway, with respect to those requests for virtual appearances, we just I, I don't know that we have an appropriate facility to arrange for that like Zoom real time and have cross examination and everyone have a visual. So we've declined that as an option. Uh, if you want to testify, you've got to be present. And how long do we allow for this hearing on the 4th? So the fourth four is set for four, four hours, hours when we typically after. reserve. Okay. Again, I don't know that it'll okay. go that long. That's how much it's been. Okay, reserved. that's fine. That's what Madam, you on the fourth. Yeah. Madam Chairman, we have a, uh, I'll call it a brief workshop schedule for that morning as well. Okay, is that going to be before or we, after? We, we probably need to do it before yeah. the four-hour hearing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I would so think like so. So like 8.30 you mean? Start the meeting? No, meeting. I'm saying we still start at 9.30. Uh, it's just that we need to do the workshop after, immediately after the board meeting and then move into the hearing. Is that time certain or upon completion? It was of upon completion. I, I prefer to give council at least a heads up to say be here early and there's there are facilities that they can sit and prep. Uh, but it would, so I, I'm reiterate that. Okay. Okay. That's all I got, Madam Chair. Okay, all right. Yeah, what's our, that workshop that day? Uh, we want to give the board. Oh, okay. Never mind. I remember. We want to give the board a Project Rise update. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, no problem. We can do that. All right. Shouldn't take long. All right. Anything else? I've, I've said enough, all I right. think. All right. But I still have more probably with the announcement. All right. That ends um, the business.